started. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Queen Erica. I almost told you, but I didn't have enough time. I was running late myself. It's so, so amazing. But uh, <laughs> I was just like, you know what? I was looking for something to wear. So I decided to wear this dress because I took it. I've been take I take this thing places and I never get to wear it. Oh, it's beautiful. And then I said, you know what? This does look like, you know, one of those movie dresses, you know, where you get to be a princess or a queen. So today I got all these duds. I even have my um my stag crown. But this one looks better, so I don't know why I keep I keep start collecting crowns. Yeah. I, yeah, I keep collecting my crowns. So today we're gonna live like queens. <laughs> it's so funny because um I always think what I want to talk about before before we get started, but then someone comes to me that morning always, bing, and then they say something, a problem or something. But um today. We're lucky enough that we get to be at home and living in our own little energy bubble. But a friend of mine reached out and of course she's living basically in zombie land. And in zombie land, like you go to work and you have mean girl conversations and people who normally like at my old job, I, I had the like most interesting people at my jobs who on an individual basis were so sweet, but when they got together, it creates some kind of monster <laughs> that makes being at work absolutely miserable. And then I have, I have had jobs where I worked at where the culture, it's like the culture of my job was so annoying. Like people were always, you know, if you get your fingernails done, they look at it and inspect it and they got to give whatever critique on it. Oh, every time you get a new pair of shoes, every time you hear it, change your hairstyle and it's like judging me, judging me, judging me or, you know, trying to put me into some type of superficial um Whatever the hell that was they, that they were doing, because I feel like like I would get do things in a utilitarian way. I get new shoes because the other ones are worn out. I didn't buy shoes so that I could go to work so that other people could judge my shoes and talk about my shoes and criticize. Oh, well, you should have got the, 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 this kind. And I'm like, you know, I got the kind that I wanted at that time. And I got the time that I could the kind that I could afford. And then um, I remember having like a super. I had a strange boss where we were we were just able to misbehave and she enjoyed us yelling at each other. She enjoyed us. Like if, if someone did something to me and she'd be like, well, what did you come here for? It, it was like she was trying to create this devil where's Prada environment where we would, you know, different have little spats and go off and she seemed to really enjoy it. And uh, I learned back then a long time ago that what I would do, I wasn't living in their world, especially too, because I was, um, I was actually like really big into church. And so I was like trying to live this different life than what they were living. It just, nothing that they ever did make sense. I thought it was because I was in church, but it's beyond that. It was beyond being in church. It was just, my values were completely different for more reasons than just that because I, I don't know how to be a superficial pretend person. And I think what a lot of people are facing at work, they don't realize like these aren't, these are really superficial pretend people who actually want to act out roles on television shows. Like people literally want to act out their life as if they are Nene Leaks and that they're on um, either Desperate Housewives, Real Housewives of Atlanta, LA Inc., or Love and Hip Hop. Like people are literally living as these characters because they think this is who you should aspire to be. My boss, what I saw was that she had a need because her son would come and he'd end up having to sit at our job. And so I would end up taking her son to work with me. 
I had another boss come after that and she just liked to, it was like, everybody was really more like um, the queen of hearts. Like they come to work with this off with your heads attitude. I even had a boss who had that a button on her desk where she pressed it and it was the queen of hearts. And she was like, Every, I'm surrounded by idiots. So repeatedly I've been in these situations where I have these bosses. Now, th this particular boss, though, she loved food. So <laughs> if I found myself in some type of situation, I would like offer to pick up food before I came to work. Like I would just find these ways, like finding needs that people had to avoid certain conflicts, like living out certain conflicts. Even at my last job at the hospital, I was, you know, with the temp workers, I would help them by is suggesting these temp jobs that I know, then with the permanent people, I would have potlucks. And so I just functioned on this level. But then when we had meetings and they would get in the meetings and argue about each other, I would say, why are we arguing with each other when we should be arguing with management about not having enough lockers in the break room and not having a big enough refrigerator and somebody needs to change the filter in this water because it hasn't been changed in two years. And I would try to function on that level. And so how, how, how do people continue, especially now with this whole extra layer of nonsense going on with, it seems like people have become even more unreal to us. And, it, and it's like, before we might've got caught up in the play, but now it seems so absurd that you can't even participate. Like you're completely dumbfounded. And I would say this effect is called um, the compression breakthrough. The light is shining from the top. The light is shining from the bottom. You see everything clear. The veil is lifting and you look and you're like, this is absolutely ridiculous but I have to go to my job or I have to be around certain people so that I can survive. How do I survive this madness? And my answer to that was to literally dumb yourself down while you're in these situations. And, it, and it'll sound like, but yeah, you, you can't bring the truth to a place that's not even real. It's so you're going to places that aren't even real with people who don't know how to be real. And if you think that you're going to bring it to the job and you're going to get fired, if you stand up for people, you're going to get fired. If you try to do the right thing, what you think is this thing is the right thing. You're going to leave yourself open because you're not really living in real reality. What, what you understand is reality. What, whatever you think is the proper response there, people are taking it completely different. And, you will notice, I know that I was living in a fake world because when I left my job of all the people that I helped and was nice to, like, I don't speak to any of them. So that you would be surprised that you're sitting right next to a person and they're smiling in your face and, and you're talking about your kids. And then the next day, if you leave that job, they are not even going to speak to you again. They're not because they're just passing time. I just watched this TV show called Clock Watchers and it would be amazing how you can just talk to people for months, years on end, and then you guys can separate and they, it's like you don't exist. It's like the time you had did not even exist and it will blow your freaking minds and you're going to find it even inside these groups and you really don't have this connection that you thought that you had here. Okay, so Erica, what you what you have talked about covers so many so many things and and different perspectives that people have. We were just talking about Tom Campbell, but but and it's the whole idea of non-player characters. And so what we're looking at is like five thousand of those non-player characters to one person who is is a player character. So. The idea of that is that we are, there's all these people who are not connected to their soul. They're just, they're, they're in 
a physical body, but they're not from here. They're not, they're not an incarnated soul in the same sense that we are. We are, we are awakening souls. And there's different theories that, you know, beings from other places come in here just to experience what it's like to have a physical experience, but they're not really invested in anything. So if you look at some of the people around us who are so shallow and worried about uh, where did you buy your shoes and they're not the you know eight hundred dollar pair of red high heel shoes from what the what the heck is the name or you didn't get your nails done and you didn't have the the, the hair done in a certain way that's so superficial and it's not about a meaning in life it's just about a physical existence about a physical experience so we were talking earlier how you feel like in your home, you get things done. And then if you go out, it, it's different because we've created around ourselves, we've created like a little bubble of our own existence. And we have people that come in and out of this bubble who are meaningful to us. But as soon as we step out into the bigger source and we're walking down the street, uh, you know, there's all these people around us. Um, we don't know whether they're actually people who have who are connected with their soul. And, and I think what's happened is more and more people are disconnected at a soul level. And so they become their frequencies are so low. And as soon as you start talking about those superficial things, that's at a low frequency. Right. We're we're into a place where we're thinking about quantum. We're thinking about how this happens and, and we're contemplating different ideas. These people are not, they're not in, they're not having an experience to ex experience a, a spiritual awakening. They're having a, a physical experience just to be physical. Um, there's a body of work called the Michael teachings. I don't know if anybody's ever uh, um, heard of the Michael teachings, not Archangel Michael. It's just about Michael. And he talks about different souls. Uh, so Michael talks about different souls and different kinds of souls. And, um, you know, how you have a baby soul who's never been incarnated in a physical form. So they're just learning to get around and just be physical. So they're going to be um, um, really concentrating about having that physical experience and of course now with all of the stuff with the you know thing in the arm and stuff there's a, a whole control but who are the people that are being controlled they're those baby souls those are those young souls because they haven't got the spiritual wherewithal to know that this is more than just a physical experience so i don't know if that if, if i'm adding to any of that or not but i think that we have to step back for ourselves and say, what is the experience that my soul wants to have? And we were talking earlier about um, um, Brian Scott, but he just did something on our limitless self and being limitless. And as soon as we start defining and say, well, I can't do it because of this or because of that, or, oh, I'm, I can only do this you know i can only travel this far we, we're now limiting ourselves right and so once we limit ourselves then we create boundaries for ourselves when we start to be that limitless person yeah i can do anything i can achieve anything and and i think you know us here in this group we we're open to like trying and experiencing life more and so we become more and more limitless. You know, we're not we're not bound by the confines that that society or our group or the government has said you can't do this. You can only do this. We are those radicals, and I think being limitless is is about being a radical and not going according to what um, has been, you know, the the mainstream sort of thing. It has become impossible to exist in pocket realities because before you there, there you know there was this general consensus to say um, fake it till you make it or get in where you fit in and if you can't beat them join them and it is no longer possible you can't uh, 
how do you say you can't swallow it you can't force it down no one can make you drink you know what i mean like we're not no one's it's become impossible to drink this particular kool-aid that that we have right here it's it's these these pocket realities where people start to adopt the ideas of others well the brainwashing process started and as a result, it's like that, like how you say the dye won't take on your hair. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, dang, the dye didn't take. And so here we are, like, sitting here, sticking out like a sore thumb. But what can we do to survive? And I was discussing with this lady this morning, um, you know, exactly what can you do to survive the mean girl crap that goes on in work and it's so funny because someone popped in the room and it was they, they had a similar situation where the person is coming to to their job and they're acting as if they're literally living on a tv show and they're they're thinking they're acting like they're on a reality show but how do you go on you know without being triggered and i basically told her to honestly just act as if she was slow live in your own reality because what i used to do is find the things that bring me joy and i would just focus on those and you know it's and so people are going to be still looking at you like you're crazy but you know if potlucks make you happy if little dolls on your desk make you happy if you know if you have to go every hour on the hour to take a breath which some people if you leave your desk you gotta now clock out to go do that you know i've had people ask me how long i was going to be in the bathroom and i said i, I don't know but i can't imagine now the the way the work is you know even people who, when they were working online at home they had to be in front of the computer actually sitting in the seat a certain amount of time where this is a lot of pressure so how do you take a break but it's gonna be your your reality is at home and your reality is in your mind Right. And so you're going to have to do things to, to focus in your mind, even if it's something you can do on your desk, a little doodle, um, maybe a little text message, maybe, um, you know, practicing more self-care at home. Definitely before you go to work, protect your bubble, you know, literally saying it out loud, the energy that I have is for me. And I retain my energy for me and nobody else. And so what I was going to suggest for people to do is make yourself do it, do an energy audit because you can be at work and there's conversations you don't have to lend your energy to. You really have to take charge of your mind and tune things out and change your focus and set your boundaries on your energy. But there's this exercise you can do called an energy audit where you just take a piece of paper and on the top corner, you write what drains you and another corner, what is neutral, another corner, what gives you energy and the one that's unknown and literally like fold it up and do these quadrants and decide where you're gonna put your energy while you're at work. Or even some people might be going through it at home, but even in your life, like what are the situations that are bringing you energy? What are the ones that are giving you energy? What are the ones that bring pain to your body and make you feel uncomfortable? And then some of them are just neutral and unknown and kind of make a decision to pull away from those things like, for me, you know, I know I used to respond to posts as they would come by, but it, did I have to respond to every post? It comes a time where I have to let go of a lot of things and I don't have to contribute even what my thought is. It's like casting pearls to swine. Do pearl, do, do need lipstick. What good is a piece? Lipstick. It's not Miss Piggy now. She she has some really nice outfits. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, you don't want to waste your good twenty dollar lipstick on a pig. You don't want to put your pearl necklace on pig. 
and waste your time and energy. And it's not to call people names or to look down on people, but really everybody doesn't deserve your energy. And we learn that with dating relationships, but it seems like we're having a hard time maybe sometimes learning this in online reactions or even at work. So my magic wand, it's gone. Oh no. No, maybe I need an a, a incense. Snap <laughs> <laughs> your fingers. Um, and so it is. Okay, yes. Oh my God, I have a magic wand. Hold on. But, but a magic wand is only a tool for us to direct our energy through. The wand isn't magic, it's us who's magic. So, oh, that's a good one. And it matches. I forgot I actually have a magic wand. This is so Yvonne's healing art. She makes the most beautiful wands. And here it is, my magic wand. There you oh it is so, pretty bobbity boo. Abracadabra. Terry's gonna pull some cards. I'm going to press some cards. I'm waiting to send it. It's about the enchanted map. Uh, and this is about our journey. And so I think we all need to, um, you, you know, you just explained the the the, the, the paper that, uh, what did you want to call that? The How you explained the paper? It's the energy quadrants. The energy quadrants, yeah. So, and I'll post so, the instructions and everything that goes with it. But. Yeah. So, so when, as you were talking about it, I was, um, I was guided to pull something from, from the map. And, um, I think this is, uh, about, um, how we start to navigate through, uh, through these energies for ourselves, right? Because we can see that there are players in, in our vicinity who aren't even real anymore because they're they're caught up into superficial things. They're not caught up into that spiritual um, um, flow that that we are um, that we've embarked on. So we're going to we're going to be you know crossing through these groups of people and they're going to be judging things and it's like. Yeah, you know, you can have two different groups of people. They're going to be judging you on opposite things, you know, like one group is going to be, you know, maybe that 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 very conservative and ultra conservative and say, why would you have your nails painted like that? Why would you paint your nails? Why would you dye your hair? And then the other group is going to say, girl, you haven't got the right nails. Your color is wrong and blah, 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 blah. So you've got two different opposing groups. Neither one of them is who you are, but we have to navigate through those waters. And so this becomes that point where we become our authentic self. And maybe we do end up walking through different timelines. Um, but if we don't sell ourselves out to any of those timelines, then we navigate through it and we just continue on our journey. Um, and I think this goes back to what we were talking about on on our interstate highway. And so this map is going to tell us about where and how we start to navigate through things. So I'm actually being told to pull three cards because it's going to give us um, a little bit of understanding here. So the first card I got is the Gentle Gardener. And the Gentle Gardener is about us being gentle with ourselves and not judging who we are. And so we're going to have situations and circumstances in our life that are going to, we're going, it's going to nurture who we are. So think of that gentle gardener as, you know, going into and nourishing and, and nurturing the little seedlings that it's planted. We're taking care of all of our energies as, as we're sort of progressing through these difficult times. And we're, we're stepping into the unknown. The unknown is about um, where we're going right now. We're all kind of questioning, like, what's happening? 
you know, oh, the 23rd of September came and went, nothing happened. The 24th came and went, nothing happened. The 25th came and went, nothing happened. You know, so there's going to be all this information out there saying, oh, something's going to happen at this time. But you know what? We, we can't, we can't um, live our lives based on what predictions are going to be. Uh, we have to, we have to just step into that unknown and deal with things as they happen because you know we can be so busy worried about what we're going to do in case this happens and that happens and then we're blindsided by something else that hits us out of the blue and that's the thing about being being able to navigate into the unknown is we can plan for something but when something unexpected happens how do we deal with it um and and this is how we gather our energies as a soul being and we have the wheelhouse to be able to deal with stuff and then the third one is coming to life so as we experience different circumstances we are becoming more and more um, connected with our soul being with that quantum self that we have that's having experiences in other places and other times but this is the most important experience that we have is where we are right now this is where our consciousness is and so for our soul this is the most important uh, place to be um, but we can see by all these other people who are superficial that they're maybe just take they're just holding space maybe their soul is in another timeline or in another planetary system or, or another galaxy or another universe and they're just uh, they're just an essence that's here but it's not who that particular soul is they're just playing a part right now um so when we look at people we have to just see them as um you know is that person's soul really connected to who they are or are they somewhere else right now? So that is, um, that I think that's what, what, you know, the message today is, is, is being gentle with ourselves as we move through, um, the unknown territory. But this is what brings us to life. You know, this is about our soul having experiences and instead of judging the experiences we have is nurturing it and being able to, face whatever um, our soul has along the journey. So, Erica, do you have anything you want to add to that? I have spoken. You have spoken. Okay. <laughs> you have. So I'm going to take a picture and we can post that on, on the on the, uh, I'll post it onto the site. Okay, hold on here. I'm not, uh, I shouldn't say I'm not, I'm not limiting myself. I do an amazing job at this, right? Okay. Okay. You know, on the telephone, it's pretty hard to find all of these when you have so many uh, things that you're connected with. <laughs> Oh, I think I need to retake that one. Okay. Okay. There we go. I will repost that. 
Okay, Miss Terry. Okay. 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 There you go. It's posted on there. So anybody have anything they want to add? Um, I, I joined late. I didn't get here until 25 minutes ago. But it's okay, sweetie. This, this is the recording, and if you wanted to add something to the recording... Oh, you can. Mother. No, you can though. I mean, I don't mind. Most some people are shy; they don't want to be on the recording. Some people don't <laughs> mind being on the recording. It's all good. Yeah, I don't mind, girl. When okay. I popped in, I was like, "Okay, Miss Terry, you got the same shirt on." My grandma, my grandma, she be wearing the same outfits like a cartoon character, and that is one of her favorite shirts, girl. And <laughs> the lavender shades. Don't play with the lavender glasses, girl. Yes, I love. I love. <laughs> Oh, and Miss Erica, y'all, when y'all was saying, um, no, I think that it was like, um, you know, sometimes it'd be like, you think uh, it's, they acting like it's a TV show or something. Like, girl, I was looking around class the other, that was yesterday. I was like, where is the camera crew? Because I can't, I, I like, I can't. Y'all sitting up here acting like it's a reality TV show every day. That's why I do find my own little things. Like, I be wanting to read sometimes in class, but I don't never have no time to do it. I only have one day since I started school, Juneteenth, to read during school. So I try to make space when I'm home for that. And then for the doodling or, like, something like that to do, I really do my own hairstyles and stuff. Like, they'll assign us a task, but I will do what I want to do because, like, nobody pays no attention to me anyway. So, I, at first, I was taking that in and internalizing, like, oh, these people don't like me and this and that, and they think I'm lame and weird. But then I was like, bro, no, they lame and weird, and I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to take advantage of my invisible cloak that I have sometimes at school. And yeah, it's really cool. Like, I, I, You know, I, I, I want to say all my life I felt like I had an invisibility cloak on. And I would, people would say to me, were you there? And I would say, yes. And it's like, I never, my voice would never be heard. But it's like, I, I felt like I had an invisibility cloak on all the time. Um, that people didn't notice me, people didn't see me. Whatever I said, it wasn't, they didn't pay attention to me. And I realized that I was probably just being, I was meant to be the observer in those situations. So, yeah, when you talk about an invisibility cloak, I am good with an invisibility cloak. <laughs> you said magic words just now. Because it's like you're talking and it's like, do you hear me? Do you hear what I just said? You can't do this. You know, just, I don't know. I I, I liked, I liked Harry Potter when he had the invisibility cloak. Because it, it that... When I saw that whole idea of the invisibility cloak, it's like, damn, I live most of my life behind this invisibility cloak. It would be nice, too, because what happens is, like I said, you're around people all the time, but you know what they say, but you don't really know what they think. Because people are people are so used to pretending to be someone else. I actually was at a... Um, a woman's talk of years ago, like four four years ago, and this woman was just talking about how it was to pretend all day with her husband, with her friends, and with her coworkers. I've met women that don't, they won't go to bed, they won't take their makeup off before bed, right? 
I had a friend, she would sleep with her makeup on and she would be the first one in the bathroom in the morning. And she had been married well over 10 years, living her life, running to the bathroom in the morning to make sure her husband never saw her without makeup or, you know, and that's a part of that, what, being in all these clubs and cliques and societies. And you really begin to see now how it's far more intense because now if it, this is it, when you're living around zombies, have you, I don't know if you've seen any of the zombie movies where for you to go out among the zombies, you got to smell like them. And if they can smell fresh blood and they can tell that you're different, they attack. This is where, where you're living at. When people can Oh, that, that she's saying something different, doing something different, wearing something different, converge on this one target and attack. And that is uh, basically survival in zombie land. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we'll go ahead and end this recording. And thank you all for watching Women of the Stars. We'll post this shortly.